are flares out forming a block perimeter around this hospital. I've watched one victim come out of an ambulance, go in on a stretcher. They look uh, exceedingly injured, and right now there are hospital beds lined up on the street right outside the hospital, waiting with paramedics right next to them for the waves of injuries. They are obviously expecting to come in here. There's a, yet another one. I don't know if you can hear the sirens coming in now. Um, New York City police officers have uh, locked this place down with wooden barricades. More coming in on trucks right now. I'm watching lit flares get put in the asphalt here. Um, there are hundreds of people lined up all around this hospital and lines and lines of people trying to get on pay phones and hard lines just to get out to call into the hospital or call their loved ones. Um, nothing works down here. Our cell phones are down. All we can watch now are just the sirens and the paramedics on standby. Um, the entire hospital all right, we have lost Molly Falconer's connection. That would not be unusual given the fact that the World Trade Center is a hub of communications in this city, uh, as well as being a, a, a nationwide financial link. Uh, folks, it just bears repeating here. Uh, this is a tremendous tragedy, yes, but we are still the most powerful nation on Earth. Uh, we perhaps will one day find who is responsible and, uh, and appropriate steps will be taken. They have not struck at America. Uh, they have struck at some individual places in America. Uh, but uh, uh, this country will go on. Let's go on to David Asman in Fox Central. David? John, as we've mentioned before, our job right now, the job of the armed forces of the United States is to prevent any further terrorist attack. As a result of that, not only is the city of New York in a lockdown status, all entrances to New York have been closed, all airports nationwide have been closed, but indeed the White House has been evacuated, the Pentagon of course having been struck uh, by some terrorist act. We're not sure whether it was an aircraft, what kind of an aircraft, but clearly the devastation is visible on the right hand of your screen. Uh, the Pentagon is in flames, is engulfed in smoke, as is the World Trade Centers. Uh, the Sears Tower in Chicago has been evacuated. Again, no specific information about whether there was a, a threatened attack on that, but no one is taking chances at the moment. The White House has been threatened as well. This is a shot earlier of that second attack you see that jet aircraft bursting as it crashes into the world trade center within 20 minutes of the other trade center tower having been attacked as well uh, once again uh, the nation as we speak is under lockdown our armed forces are taking all necessary precautions to prevent another attack those include closing all united states airports as a result of this attack as you see there, one that occurred about an hour ago, and an attack in the Pentagon as well. Uh, we are a nation in lock, under lockdown, and once again, we are prepared for the worst, but we are prepared. John? All right. David Asman, thanks very much. I want to go to our Washington managing editor, Britt Hume, who has uh, the outlook from the nation's capital. Britt, this raises all kinds of questions about America's response, and I guess that a response is not going to be immediate, is it? Well, whether it is immediate or not, the one thing I think we are seeing, John, is this uh, series of evacuations from various uh, buildings around Washington. And I think it's important to say that we don't know and have no reason to believe that the White House, for example, was uh, facing any immediate or imminent threat. The same is true on Capitol Hill, where it appears they will be evacuating uh, the building up here soon. No, uh, nothing has happened at either of those places. Obviously, if you put your yourself in the position of officials with responsibility for any of these places, the safe move uh, in light of what we've seen is to evacuate places, just as the safe move was for the... Uh, uh, for the authorities to close the airports to keep uh, any new planes uh, out of the sky. So uh, I think uh, we have a blend here of things that have really happened which are chilling in themselves and things that are happening out of precaution that may or may not denote any particular threat. So it's worth, uh, worth keeping all that in mind. As for whether there'll be any retaliatory action by the United States, obviously that's uh, days away and we're, you know, if not longer, we may, uh, it may be a long time before we know exactly how this was orchestrated 
organized by whom and so on. Uh, this, of course, though, John, I think this is one of these days where we can say that things will not again be the same in the United States of America. This is the kind of terrorist attack that is the nightmare that uh, experts and others have warned about, uh, but some of us may have thought really could not happen on such a scale. This is quite remarkable. It is that. Uh, Britt Hume in Washington, thanks very much. And uh, I think when the investigation is all over, uh, we will find that this was perhaps somewhat easy to pull off, but uh, that is yet to come. Jim Angle is joining us now from Washington. Uh, Jim, what can you tell us about that fire outside the Pentagon? Jim Angle, are you with us? Uh, I can tell you first that the roads around the White House, the streets around the White House, were blocked seconds ago. Uh, members of the Uniformed Division of the Secret Service ran out to intersections and started diverting traffic. There are emergency vehicles on almost every block around the White House. The road south of the White House has also been blocked. And as you know, the White House is being evacuated. Federal employees are standing on the street corners in and around the White House, uh, having left the building for fear of another attack. As you come into Washington from Virginia, about two miles from the Pentagon, you can see the smoke billowing up from the building, huge clouds of smoke, so much so that uh, commuters coming into town have pulled over to the side of a busy freeway, what is ordinarily a busy freeway, and are sitting watching in amazement as the symbol of the United States Defense Establishment uh, goes up in smoke. So there is an amazement all over Washington. Uh, people are not sure what to think. Uh, you've got a lot of federal employees standing around in this area watching as the streets are blocked off and emergency vehicles rush to and fro. We're not sure uh, what they are up to, uh, but clearly there is concern about the safety of the White House and the surrounding buildings. John. Uh, Jim, do you know anything about uh, what kind of uh, plane or helicopter uh, is involved in that Pentagon incident? I do not, but I can tell you uh, whatever it is, it caused substantial uh, damage and fire. Uh, I can't tell you how large the smoke plumes are coming from the Pentagon. Uh, it Folks, is, it, Jim, it let is, me interrupt it, you. Uh, we are looking at live pictures of the World Trade Center literally starting to crumble. It is, it is falling apart as, uh, as we watch these pictures live. The World Trade Center, 110 stories, literally starting to fall. Bill Daly, let me bring you into the conversation. I know this was the goal of the terrorist strike back in 1993. Yeah, John, it, it was. And uh, they thought they could do it by putting charges down in the basement and, uh, and damaging the, the understructure. Um, and as much as these buildings were, were built to withstand uh, a, a certain large hit, including some aircraft, apparently uh, the structural integrity appears, from what we can see here, uh, to be faltering to some degree. They were not designed, perhaps, to take a direct strike from something the size of a 737 or perhaps a an Airbus, perhaps fully loaded with fuel, steel will melt. And uh, that, all right, uh, David Lee Miller is, uh, is still with us. Uh, David, what can you tell us? <laughs> David Lee Miller, can you tell us uh, what happened there? All right, David Lee Miller, who has seen his share of horrors around the world in trouble spots in the Middle East and elsewhere, is in that area. Uh, reporting on what we think we can see. I, I want to stress it's, it's tough to... Hello? Yeah, David Lee, what can you tell us? John, uh, the scene is horrific. One of the two towers literally collapsed. I was making my way to the foot of the World Trade Center suddenly while talking to an officer who was questioning me about my press credentials. We heard a very loud blast, an explosion. We looked up and the uh, building literally began to collapse before us. There was uh, debris falling, uh, I'd say, at least three quarters the height of the building. People within uh, the entire perimeter began literally, including myself, which is why I'm out of breath, to run for our lives. And I am now standing uh, in a black cloud of, of, of smoke left over from the debris. Debris, there's soot. It's difficult to breathe. People ran into nearby office buildings once they got out of the danger zone just to be able to breathe. I'm on a payphone on the street right now, and I literally cannot see more than a quarter block away. 
That's how thick the smoke is. I'm on Murray Street and West Broadway, for those who know Lower Manhattan. Not clear now is why this uh, explosion took place. Was uh, it because of the, uh, the planes that uh, two planes dual attacks this morning? Or was there some other attack which there has been talk of here on the street? But I can tell you this, that uh, the police have moved people back and it's going to be a long time. Yeah, David, uh, we are looking at the replay of what happened that you're describing. It happened just moments ago. It sure appears that I'm just guessing now that they gave way. The loss of life here is going to be enormous. May, may uh, God help those who are there and the victims and their families uh, and all the souls that are lost today. Yeah. I think it's safe to say that virtually every family in America is going to be touched by this, uh, by this disaster. This is what the uh, terrorists back in 1993 tried to accomplish when they uh, drove a uh, van laden full of bombs into the garage. Uh, and apparently they were successful. John? Let me bring in the former governor of New York, Mario Cuomo. He's with us by telephone now. Governor, what's your reaction? That's the only thing I can ask you. It's the same as everyone else is. Uh, everybody now is, is holding their breath and measuring the extent of the tragedy as it grows from moment to moment. And that will be the story, I'm sure, for the next uh, 24 hours is uh, how much damage was done. I think the, the longer range story is even more terrible. The longer range story is who did it and why. And if it were a nation, it would be easy to deal with, but it's not a nation. It'll be individual Excuse terrorists. Excuse me, uh, Governor, can you hold, hold on for just a second? From the tower, from right to left, I guess, west to east, and it just, everything just all of a sudden just imploded. I ran as fast as I could, went inside of a building about a block away. I stood in the building for a couple of seconds, and then all of a sudden the building started falling out, filling up with smoke. I was with a bunch of law enforcement officers. We couldn't get out of the building because everything was locked up. And then I came out, and everything was filled with ash, and it looks like I'm, looks like I'm in a surreal movie. Do you, do you know if it was an explosion or if it was a building collapse? To me, it sounded like it, it, to me it sounded like an explosion. Like the building collapsed. Were there other people? There must have been a lot of people on the ground nearby when it happened. Oh, mo where that happened, there was mostly law enforcement. I don't think there were many uh, civilians there. I don't know. Don't move, Pat. How many, how many people were in the, uh, when the building exploded? I don't I, Over on that corner there, I don't know. There might have been there might have been 100, 150. I don't know. What's your, what's your full name, officer? Police officer Gronowski. All right. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Folks, you're you're looking at live pictures on the left of your screen. On the right of your screen, the uh, tower, one of the twin towers of the World Trade Center. There's there's thick ash on the ground, lots of it. Pandemonium here a short time ago, when the building did collapse or whatever it was that happened. It was a huge explosion, a huge rumbling cloud of smoke and fire came across Church Street and then started billowing this way, and all we saw was, was people, were people running in this direction, everyone, law enforcement people, a woman pushing a baby carriage. This is actually, a, we believe, debris from one of the planes that hit one of the towers on the World Trade Center. The FBI is here, as you can see. They had roped this area off. They were taking photographs and securing this area just prior to that huge explosion that we all heard and felt. We. Uh, We'll try and talk to some of these guys. Can you tell me what you saw, what you heard? So no, you all right? Yeah. All right, thank you. Where were, where were you, sir, when that happened? Right on the street. <laughs> what did you see? What did you hear? It felt like another plane coming. Everybody took cover to run. We ran down the subway, but the dust followed us down there. Were there a lot of people in the subway? Uh, no, not that many, because they already had evacuated before. Did you see people, anyone in danger, anyone getting hit when this? Not back there, yeah, but I was running. I mean, there was nothing you can do, because you just saw the thing coming right over. Have you seen, were you able to see the tower after? No. What do you mean, since it happened now? Since the fire? Look at this guy, look at this guy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The streets have been shut down. Uh, there was very little traffic on the streets except for emergency vehicles going one way or the other. So there was not a lot of vehicle traffic in this area. 
but there were a lot of pedestrians on almost every single corner taking photographs and, and just looking at the building, which was still smoking and still on fire. A lot of police officers at the back. officials up there that were right near the building. Where were you when the explosion occurred, when the plane hit the building? I was, uh, I saw it from my office, as a matter of fact, down the Lower East Side. So, you...